You're back. How you doing, sir? <laughs> <laughs> We're weird, dude. Um, so, uh, you and I were talking off camera a little bit. And, you know, you and I go on rants about certain things. We always have fun discussions. Yeah. Um, so, we were talking about uh, a couple things. The first, I guess the first thing I was, we were talking about, uh, you, have you heard about the Xbox yeah. thing? Yeah. Where, like, someone found out that Xbox is porting over some of their exclusives over to Sony. And then mm -hmm. people are like saying it's the end of the world type of thing. Like Xbox, my Xbox is not making consoles anymore because they're starting to port over their exclusives. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about that? Like, what do you, I mean, obviously the CEO has come out and stated that they they are going to make consoles. Do you think it's a lie or do you think they're going to make consoles now, but they will eventually stop? They're going to stop. Hell, uh, best example I say is Hell Divers. Where everybody said, like, because you can see it, the console war thing, that was what the driving market was before. Oh, I got Xbox, you got PlayStation, fuck you, ha ha ha. It doesn't happen anymore. It's everybody saying for hell divers. All right, we need the Xbox people. It's not a console war thing anymore. Then you have all the games that's like, all right, you play Call of Duty on PlayStation, I play it on Xbox. We can merge the lobbies now, which we're not going to act like it was that hard for them to do. Before. Yeah, and, and I think I, I said this on the previous podcast uh, episode was. That's the only thing that would change this whole console war type thing, or oh, will squash it is the whole uh, crossplay. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, us all sharing the same servers. It really doesn't matter now what console you have. The only thing that I was af I am afraid of, and I like that you're here to actually discuss it, is that if Xbox decides that they're not gonna make consoles anymore, you know, what does that mean? Like, uh, Sony will have a monopoly essentially. No, I think they're all gonna die. I think, hate to say it, the PC's not gonna be upset. PC's gonna win. Think, we're always gonna have computers because whether or not you think about it, forget the gaming side of it. You gotta have a PC for ninety percent of what people do. Yeah, but your phone is great for some things, but then you know, once it gets to something you need a little bit more power, you gotta buy a computer. True, true, but I mean, a lot of people aren't buying PCs now though. Yeah, because you got options. When the market works, sometimes you got options. Sometimes you got you got to follow the thing. And well, what would make you think that Sony would stop making consoles? If if Xbox dropped out, Sony's. <laughs> so well, you have the Switch in there, but I, as I was saying, the Switch is kind of its own thing. It's a handheld market. Nintendo won't drop out because Nintendo has has its own niche of things. So N Nintendo has never like tried to compete with Sony or or uh, X or Microsoft. Right. It's always been its own little niche. Like all right, we got Mario, we got more uh, Nintendo's more like the the child's the, the children brand and everything. Granted, we all still play Mario. We, let's just not act like we don't. But it's more like the children's thing where it's like, "Hey, you guys can have the big games." Yeah, they put Mortal Kombat on the Nintendo Switch, but then even when it came out, everybody's like, "This looks like crap." Nintendo stays in its own niche, so it's in the competition, but it's not really trying to compete. It's like, hey, we're good with our our share of the market. We can stay there. Sony um, and Microsoft have always been the ones going back and forth, but, you know, with Microsoft and its Game Pass, they've been pushing the cloud thing. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's just going to be weird, though. I think it's just going to be wild because I was worried about, like, if Xbox did pull out and they just poured over their Game Pass to, like, Sony... Um, you know, I think Sony could just dictate like, "Hey, PS Five now is worth is you know five hundred bucks." Ooh, his, you gotta remember something too about uh systems. You don't make money off of systems. They don't. So I mean, they could jack the prices up, but you remember what happened with the PS Three when they jacked the price up and they said, "Well, we're not making money. We're gonna make it a thousand dollars." You saw how everybody stopped buying it. That thousand dollars what lasted like a month or two. You're right. Yeah, I guess that's true. Uh, I guess I was just thinking like of the worst thing that could happen. I, I wouldn't be too worried just off the simple fact. Now, if PC gaming disappeared, wait, sorry, if PC gaming disappeared, then I'd be a little bit concerned yeah. because, because the then the market gets controlled. But with PC gaming, you could say, well, oh, well, they raised the PS5 to $1,000. Well, then at that point, you spend one, two, maybe $300 extra more. You actually get a decent PC. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Not everybody's weird like me, where I told you where it's like, no, nah, if I get a PC, I want like the three thousand dollar one because I don't want to upgrade in a year or two. I want to be good, and then it gets to a point where it's like, well, it's time to upgrade the PC. Yeah, it's been ten. Well, years. I made the I made the point uh, when I talked about last episode when I was by myself, uh, like that you're the you, the same thing you just said that you know, say the Sony side that they're gonna sell the next the PS6, right? Xbox is gone. They decide that they're gonna sell the PS6 for a thousand dollars. Okay. Well then you're going into the realm now of buying a PC, like price for a PC, so and then you got Steam. The Steam's free and it, it becomes a thing of where it's like, okay, you wanna play this, you guys wanna play this? Oh, you're gonna spend real money on our system. Do your specs line because we can all say this. An Xbox and a PlayStation do not line up to a good PC. We all understand this. We all know this. If you want to ask for that kind of money, you now got to provide those kind of specs because the system has always been at three, four, five hundred dollars to get it. Inflation, blah blah blah. Nobody's ever said, "Oh, well, my Xbox runs better than your PC." We, we all know this. No, you got it. Your PC is better, better quality, and everything. Sorry, because I know I'm sitting back. But no, nah, we all know PC has spec wise, PC destroys consoles. But the console's great for what it does. So I just noticed I love consoles for what they are. Mm-hmm. I guess because we've grown up on them. But ever since I've gotten a PC, it's kind of hard for me not to play one. It's kind of hard because, like, I mean,. You played Lethal with us, you know, like little yeah. games like Lethal Company or like just like the little indie games that cost no money. They're fucking fun. I think it's the thing of too that you get with because of with just like the my limited experience with Steam. I feel like the smaller like publishers, it's easier to step into Steam. Whereas I know with Sony and Microsoft, you gotta probably jump jump through some hoops. You might have to verify a couple things. It's like making a, it, I know I, this, I kind of do know a little bit better, making an app for Android and making an app for Apple, two completely different things. Android, you really can just Android's make an Android's open app source. And, yeah. you, put, you can just make an app for Android and put it out there and people can just download it. Apple, you got to jump through their hoops. It has to be has a specific to, thing. Like you, it has, you have to meet this criteria, that criteria. I get it though, because there's certain things with Apple's backing. So with Android, being it's like, it's source. like their name, you know, Apple's mm-hmm. like, if it's on Apple, it's going to work. It's going to be great. Blah, blah, blah. Like it's, they're fucking their shit up. Yeah. If it doesn't work. Android, not that Android sucks, but uh-huh. they're kind of just like, they're so free market that they're just yep. like, whatever. It's, Oh, this app is crashing. It, it's open source. They, 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 this is the that's the great thing about open source is anybody can do it. But that's also the bad thing about open source. Anybody can do it. So what do you? I mean, we're talking about you know Xbox not making games though. But like, how do you feel? Or like, what do you feel about like uh, Sony right now? They're like um, laying off a bunch of people. Like, what do you, what do you think that the whole point of that is? I think the problem is now you run into an issue of cost. It costs them. So these big games cost, they're not putting 100,000 into a game anymore. They're putting millions, some, some of the larger titles, billions, and you're not talking about a game. Uh, when we were younger, fi- something like Final Fantasy. You get a new Final Fantasy like almost once a year, once, twice every year. Now we're talking about you had a Final Fantasy every console. And it's not like, oh, we we spent a year working on it. No, you hear you hear about the initial launch on um what is the event that always happens for the gaming where they actually launch a lot oh, of E three. E three. E three doesn't exist anymore. That's funny. That's how long I've been out of all of this. Yeah, they actually it, since COVID COVID pretty fucked it up for that. Uh okay. E three was yeah, when COVID happened, E three was cancelled and then they were trying to bring it back last year, but then they just canceled it and now it's official that it's like dead but i think what's crazy though is like i think covid kind of made companies realize that they could just do their own thing yeah Yeah. nintendo already kind of went away from e3 and was like doing their own like launch yeah i mean you have all the social media now it's like why am i paying you to announce my game i guess it's because it was like it was a tradition you know yeah and but i get it people you you follow tradition and then once you can kind of weasel away, find your way to sneak out of it, you jump out of it because I know they were losing money doing stuff like that. Yeah, but like so, Sony lays off nine hundred people 
and cancels projects. I don't know what pro they have announced what projects they canceled, and they also closed the London studio. London thing, I couldn't. Nothing canceling projects for video games to me doesn't surprise me. They've been doing that forever. Do you think it just comes down to like cost and production? Because some people I know when they have a vision for a game, it's an art to them. Like writing the code is one thing, but actually coming up with the story and everything, it's an art. So then I get it where you're just like, you're no, I gave you this script for this game, it's going to be done this way. Well, that's going to cost us this much more. I don't care. Oh, that's not how this works. I got budgets. If you don't fall within this budget, you have to sell this much of this game. Or I have to raise the price of it. Oh, it, it, it's how we had last time I was here when we were talking about Gauntlet. Gauntlet for, for $10? Yes. Gauntlet for 40 Oh, you can kiss my ass. Yeah, yeah. There are these other games that we've played games where um, for a $15 game, oh, this is, this is A+. Plus. This is great. Indie game, great. But we can't say that a lot of these indie games compete are like if a lot of these indie games, if they charge you sixty dollars, you would be pissed. If they charge twenty dollars, like we understand the cost. And I think that's it. what like, makes it more fun too. Like yeah. I mean, with Lethal Company being ten dollars, and then with with the concept of what the game is, mm -hmm. even though it's the graphics are you know like, mediocre, it's yeah. but it the concept of the game is good. Like they hammered out that whole thing, so it's like it's a ten dollar game, but it's like. It's a great ten dollar game, but if if I if I handled you Lethal Company for sixty dollars, you would look at me and the first thing you say is the concept great, fun game to play. You got your goddamn mind if you're gonna charge me sixty dollars for a game and it looks like this. I I mean, was even wild too because I think Hell Divers two that came out, I think that's like thirty bucks. Yeah, nope. I think like thirty or four. It's something. It's nothing out of the norm for a new game to come out. And to be cheaper than what a standard game would be cost, it's kind of. I think the thing is now is that if you're a big market, so you know you're, um, if you're a, a, what is the actual term? It Call of Duty is considered one of these games. Triple uh, A, I think is a. Tri yeah, if it's a triple A game, you're seventy dollars. If you're like a, you still come like you'll still come from like Activision, Infinity Ward, stuff like that. Those markets, but you're not as much backing it it'll be like 40 50 maybe 30 and then your indie games and let me 20 indie games are normally 20 or less i think what's pissing people off though like i think what a lot of people are going to these like you know single a games or double a, whatever you want to call, to call it any games right if they're going to these indie games more now is because they're tired of these they're trying to make a point i think us as a as a consumer we're trying to make a point like i rather play lethal company at ten dollars for hours and hours than call of duty the other problem too is nobody wants to accept. We all have ADD now, because think about when we were kids, you weren't getting hit with the new game every like technically with all the indie, all of every all the with Steam, PlayStation, Microsoft, you're getting hit with the new game every day. We didn't have that kind of access when we were that is, younger. That it is was, true. We, it was limited, so it was like people would make games and you would actually sit there and play it. Like remember. Halo came out, like, Halo 1, Halo 2. We were still playing Halo 2 months. Hell, even, like, years after it came out. You're not picking up the Call of Duty from last year anymore. You're going to play the newest one, then once the new one comes after that, it's like the 2K of Madden. Nobody plays Madden 22 anymore. Nobody's playing Madden 23. You play Madden 24. Then when 25 comes out, you play Madden 25. You don't go back. No or you just make the choice not to do it. There's that, too. But you've never heard somebody say, we always complain, oh, the old man or the old 2K was so much better than this. I'll never go back and play it. <laughs> yeah, true. That's true. I, I just, I think it's funny though, because like, um, I made the point that a lot of these AAA developers need to be worried though. I would be. Because, I mean, a game like Lethal Company was so big. Uh, Power World. I'm sure you've heard of Power World, right? Yeah game like that had a budget that was like minuscule amount of money compared to a lot of these AAA games and it blew up it, it's like huge and the concept of it is so simple but it's such like a a game that everyone wants to play mm -hmm. and these people these like small develop small developing companies just raking in money mm -hmm. 
So like, what do you think about that? Like, do you think, do you think these AAA companies are going to really look at this or they're just going to like, ah, they're going to look at it. And then kind of what we talking about off camera, but I think Grand Theft Auto six is going to be the test of time. Is it worth it? Cause that's a multi-billion dollar project. We were hearing about Grand Theft Auto six forever. Like, you got, well, I think we got the official release earlier this year, but you know, we all knew Grand Theft Auto 6 was in the works. It was just, it was just when they were going to like drop the, yeah. the yeah. when it was going to come out. Cause I mean, you could still play, you could play Grand Theft Auto 5 on your PS5 still. Mm-hmm. So. But if that one doesn't do great and not, oh, it sold 10 million copies, but that's great for Grand Theft Auto is you sell 100 million copies. Next year, you sell the first time it comes out, it's got to sell like 100 million copies, digital and physical included. Then the following year, it's got to sell like 50 million to make up for the people that you know didn't get it when it first came out. But the thing that would really concern me is, and no, I don't think a lot of people notice. Remember how long Grand Theft Auto stayed at full, Grand Theft Auto 5 stayed at full? Yeah, price? I think even now it's just finally at like 20 bucks still. So. And depending on where you go, some people still finagle you into paying more for it. It's it's wild. And that concerns me because even when we were younger, Grand Theft Auto for like the first year or two was expensive. And then after that, you started seeing it as like, oh, Game of the Year edition. You started seeing the cheaper version. It's like, okay, they made their money. They're good now. It's like, okay, we can now treat this as a, a classic game. And yeah. Yeah, I just like I feel like sometimes like triple de- like the triple A developers they don't really give a fuck. Like they're gonna like oh these people have short term memories so they're gonna like. So I don't think it's the engineers. I think it's I don't think it's the engineers or the coders. I think it's the people above. like the CEOs or yeah it's the it's the, the boardroom no, people. We, we need to make money. It's like, but the game isn't gonna be good because I know they know that it's like this is repetitive. This is the same shit as last time. But it's gonna make money. They're gonna buy it. Like, no, it. We can make it better. No, 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 no. no. That's gonna break the budget. I, I, I think it's people above them because it's all that it ever is. It's not the people that's doing the work that's complaining about it. It's always somebody that is complaining about the money. Free guy. I've heard. I've heard about. So we're literally talking about this movie, Free Guy. Okay, the whole concept of this movie, uh, Free Guy, was like, like we're just talking about, like the developer, like the the main like CEO developer of this game. It was a pretty much like Grand Theft Auto, right? And you know, Ryan Reynolds, blah blah. It's long story short, he's like one of the characters in the game, like an NPC. But they were working on launching like the second adaptation of the game, like the sequel, and they were like what was like what's what's cool about this game like like the developers like what's what are we gonna do like what blah, blah, blah. And he's like nothing we're gonna just rewrap everything in this old game and just send it out as the sequel and still charge the same price and that's how i feel like a lot of these triple a developers do it now you know they just rewrap shit and and we're dumb for paying the money again for the same thing. I mean, I think after, I think with Model for 3 coming out, it kind of showed people that. Like, people kind of became more aware of it. Yeah. I'm saying because people were like, this seems like just a Model for 2 DLC. But yep. we're paying $70 again for this. Well, you got to think about it now with all the Call of Duties. They don't even update the main screen. It's the same thing. You, I can run um, this year's modern, uh, Call of Duty. I can run last year's uh, Call of Duty. From the same um, game hub, it's all the same. Oh stuff. yeah, 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 yeah. They, it, it, I it, think even Modern Warfare One shares the same fucking. Yeah, they, I remember when um, my friends got it because they downloaded it before me. They're like, this, this is just a hundred gigabyte D- DLC. Yeah, that's what, what we're at now. Yeah, fresh coat of paint. It, yeah, that's exactly. That's a good po- analogy. It's a fresh coat of paint. Yeah, oh, man, that's a, I don't know. That's why I think I'm kind of sticking to this PC right. Now. That that's why I said when did you say. But then, like oh, when oh, these oh, other big cool yeah. games are coming out, like Final Fantasy Seven, you know, Rebirth's coming out. But here's the thing with that: I think at a certain point, Square Enix is going to say the same thing and go to PC. I'm about to say it's. I didn't they port the last one to PC. It took them a year though. It took them a couple years to. 
because they may mark because I know PlayStation's involved and it's a uh, it's a whole money thing and they're like no you can't do I think I think work. Rebirth is going to be ported over within the year now so I, I can check Hold on it's not the company because it it does from a business side it doesn't make sense for a, um a company to say oh well, I'm not going to put it out on this system it, it has to be written into the contract uh, it, the, yeah the, the year so it says it's I mean it's coming out it's already out now. It'll be coming out in 2025. Because I'm about to say, if, that, if, if Square Enix was saying in their mind that, no, we refuse to work with Microsoft, you wouldn't see a single Final Fantasy game on Xbox or Microsoft. Well, the, PC is like the only thing that you can have that you can play everything. I think it's because nobody can write in a contract to say, well, you can't put it on PC. Well, people today aren't dumb. Somebody would take a, a PlayStation, just put it, load it, and they somehow figure out how to Make load it. Make an emulator, their, yeah. You, Trust me, they somebody if you if if it actually got to a point where they were like, we're not putting any more PlayStation games on PC, there is some coding genius out there that'll say, Oh, that's fine. Download the files, sit there, make the emulator, wrap it, do everything that they need to do. They say, you know, he's playing a PS5 game on there. Yeah, it'll be a little buggy and everything, and then more people get involved and they'll just they'll just fix all the bugs and make it better. So then they're now Square Enix is losing out on another market. It's 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 bad business. Then why would I handicap myself from a market? That's that's like sports brands. Nike doesn't just deal with basketball and football. They deal with Nike with basketball, football, baseball, soccer. They're getting into pickleball now. <laughs> what? They're in everything because it's business. The more people that see my brand, the more people that I, the more market I have. Nobody nobody says, oh, I want to limit market share. Let's open it. That's why Microsoft saying, "Oh, we're the minute that Halo should." At some point, I knew Halo was going to end up on a PlayStation. And that's and but that's but that's also why I think it makes sense though on why Xbox is going to eventually stop making consoles because they've lost money every time they come out with a console. Sony always blows them out of the water, yeah. all the time, regardless. You know, you can you can the numbers speak for themselves. They always blow them out of the water. So I think they're like, we have the developers, like we have all the big. Triple A game developers, so we could just make the games, and that's where and that's where the money is. is. So, and then the other thing that people don't realize too is that it's like Microsoft is is a software company, so it would make more sense for them not to make hardware. Now, granted, they make a a, a bunch of hardware, but their basis was software. Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, like that's where the company started. Then you have all the OS. They started off with those and the OS system. That's where the money is for them. So how you said, oh, they bought all the game developers, and everybody was worried at first. But they're like, oh, the new, uh, when the new Skyrim came out, everybody was like, they're not going to put it on the PlayStation. No, they're not. That's stupid. That's like somebody buying uh, the studio that makes Grand Theft Auto and saying, oh, we're not going to put it out on everything. Bullshit. Grand Theft Auto will come out on a Nintendo Switch if they can figure out how to do it. But the game's too big. Yeah. Also, I feel like, no, no, they'll do it. They'll do it. It'll look horrible. You got it. Grand Theft Auto, I see that when Grand Theft Auto 6 drops, that's going to be a 300 gigabyte day. Do you think that's going to be the biggest game to ever come out? Okay, you know how hyped up this game is. How hyped up it is. Do you think it's going to be a letdown, though? I think the game's going to be fine. Well, I'm not a big Grand Theft Auto person. I'm, it's just, not, it's just my, not my cup of tea. I'm not saying it's a bad game. I think the game will be fine. The problem is this game has had hype since the PS4, the, the, oh, the Xbox One, it's hard. Like, even think about it, every time the new Final Fantasy comes out, instead of enjoying the moment, we're looking for holes. Because even when I, uh, what is it, 17, 15 now? That just came out? That, even I read, whatever the latest. Oh, dude, damn it. Look, damn it! I beat the game already. I enjoyed my story. I had my fun. I love Final Fantasy games. The only thing with them is there's not really too much play. Play again. Yeah, they have the new game plus modes, but unless you're somebody that likes 100%ing a game, for me, I'm not one of those people. I kind of I have my fun and I move on to the next thing. But even when that came out, and you know, I was just reading reviews because I remember they were they like did another fi- sixty. All right. Okay. So that it was 15, no, it was another Final Fantasy that I read about I was going to get, and they were like, ugh, don't get this one, it's, 
it's Final Fantasy, but it's not as good as like they normally do with it. It's not like one of the number series. So you know, like the number series, they really put their it, they really put their work behind it. Right. It was like one of the off ones, like how we always had the city uh mm. and all of mm. that. It Wasn't was, it like um fuck. You know what I'm talking yeah. about. It was after 15, before 16. It mm-hmm. wasn't a main one. It came out ju- maybe a five, six months before 16 did. And I remember reading reviews and they were like, it's it's cool, but it's not those Final Fantasies. And then I read the reviews for 16 when that came out. They're like, oh, it's okay. It's a weird concept. And like I was reading negative reviews and then I played as like, no, this is actually a good game, but I can get it now where it's like, you've been hyping this forever. And then I know the thing with Final Fantasy that kind of threw people off too is when um, fifteen kind of broke the narrative and you have this uh, live action style combat versus the turn base, which has been around for Final Fantasy forever. Even though Final Fantasy uh, twelve with um, Vaughn and all of them was more open world, but that was still turn based. Yeah, I'm still trying to find it. Hold on, you, I know what, I know which one you're talking about. It's like a weird guy instead um kind of look over your shoulder and see if i see it oh i'm an idiot wait spongebob we have technology <laughs> i think it was strangers of paradise because it's after the final fantasy 7 remake 16 what the heck is Final Fantasy VII ever? Played? Oh, I thought you were talking about Type O. At first. Oh, the card one. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. I liked that. That that was a different concept. I was not a fan of. I that was one. not a fan of that one, dude. But I get it though. They were trying something. Maybe it was Paradise. Yeah, Stranger. Yeah. I, I remember. Never, I didn't even heard of this shit. Well, I'm amazed the Steam and IGM were that hot. I remember when it came out. People were saying like, "It's cool. It's." It was how we were just having the conversation about like a $60 versus a $40 game. They're like, $60 is not worth it. They were like, this is like a $30, $40 game. I've never heard of this hoe. What the fuck? They made that? I didn't even, I I never heard of this. Yeah, no, no, no. And I say I'm a big Final Fantasy guy. I've never even heard of the game. Damn. They said it for like $40, it was a decent game. They said it wasn't a $60 game though. Oh, okay. It 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 was that debate all over again. I'm amazed. Nine out of ten on Steam. They dropped the price. I hate to say it like that. I'm trying to figure out what this Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis was. Oh, it was on Android, iOS. Talking about letdowns, though. Have you watched the new Avatar: The Last Airbender show yet? I haven't, and I keep seeing people say, "Oh, it's bad." Then I was I hear yeah. something where it's like, "Well, they can't." copy the an- they can't copy the the, the anime the show, the show. Yeah. it's one for one i'm like i get that but it, i know you can't copy everything and i get it there's budgets there's timelines and everything like writing a cartoon over a, a 10 years period is yeah. different versus trying to do a live action show because over 10 years ang the person ang the cartoon over 10 years doesn't grow up ang the human actor <laughs> in real life will grow up yeah yeah well so what's funny <laughs> is that i've been seeing the same shit too where people are like it's poo poo. Uh, don't watch it. Or some people are like, it's de- it's for what it is. It's good. I uh, I made the. I'm gonna make a video or, or make a series of me watching it mm-hmm. and reviewing it and like live. Just okay. give my overall honest review. Well, I heard one thing. At least the goddamn firebenders don't need a pot of fire around <laughs> the fire bin. So so I heard the CGI was pretty dope. I heard I heard the fighting is pretty cool. You know what? With today's technology, it better be fucking dope. Yeah, like, <laughs> I just heard it's fucking, uh, that, like, they actually got the... Okay, I'm saying this with a grain of salt, that I hear that, like, they at least, from what I've seen, they're kind of staying within the realm it's never, of the cartoon. It's never going to be one-on-one, because normally when you do live-action stuff, It sometimes it doesn't translate. It, it, it well. just doesn't translate as well. But you know what's weird is that uh, this someone made a good point. So I watch RDC a lot, mm-hmm. and they said uh, they were talking about it, and they're like, um, "Why? If if you feel like you can't do it, 
Like if you feel like you can't port it over to like live action, mm-hmm. why do it? Because then you're kind of ruining it. Money, and then what happens is somebody has the idea, and it's a great idea. Yeah. They're like, well, we've seen all these other things. Like, because they're not the first to do it. They're not going to be the last. Somebody sees somebody else do it. They get the backing of, okay, we can really do this. And then what kind of happens, too, is because we know everything that's going on, now they might try to fill in some gaps that might have been there for before. So they might give you some extra information that we didn't know at first. So like the first book of Avatar, there are certain things that we didn't know. Now, I did see one thing. I don't know if this is real or not. And the guy was making the comment. He's like, wait. Aang is now teaching Katara water bending, and like within a day, she's a water master. I'm like, heard, uh, yeah. and I was like, her being a water master in a day or two, I get it because you can't waste weeks at a time I showing somebody's know. training. No, in no, real- no, 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 no. I don't get that part. I don't get that part because they can at least. It's a show. It's not a movie. You can let you can let that shit slide a little bit. Imagine like, if the Rocky montage actually covered the month the months period that he was training for the fight. No, but it's a movie <laughs> that's different though. Like I'm just saying, like, look, you have a show. I understand the episodes can't be as long as the books or as the as the as cartoon, mm-hmm. right? But I'm just saying, like, don't make her a master within a day or two. Like she's still like she's still a novice and she progresses. I got you. Because I heard this and it was the funniest thing about Netflix. Okay, Netflix. All their shows, like Netflix back shows, are really just 10, 11 hour movies. Okay. They because they said they did the joke was this. It was, oh, well, here's this 10, 11 hour movie of what you want to watch. No, why the fuck would I sit there for eleven hours and watch a movie? Okay. Here's eleven one hour episodes. Oh, I'm gonna watch this all tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny, yeah. Because it's not like Netflix does these, and it's like it's not like you're getting. It's so if we were getting like an episode, yeah, but in every book week, one, in book didn't... one, she was asked though. Well, here's the question: She didn't. Are they start... going to get the book four? But hold on, she. But okay, you'll get to book four if you fucking make book one good. But you got to make the money. Okay, but if you okay, look, we we may disagree to agree to this. Yeah. Okay, look. What made what made the cartoon good? The choreography, yeah. fighting, the storytelling, everything, right? Sokka being Sokka. Sokka being Sokka. Uh, but the overall story, right? Yeah. Okay. You can implement that into live action. It may not be as many episodes, right? You can make the... Ep- I mean, the cartoon was what? Maybe 30 minute long episodes? Uh, uh, maybe. 20, it without, like with, 20 minutes. Without commercials the, was like 20, 20 something minutes, minutes yeah. right? Okay. Okay. I'm assuming these are hour long episodes. I'm assuming. Yeah, I would okay. assume the same. So you're doubling. So yeah, you can pretty much take two episodes, you're doubling it. But look, if you at least implement the basic structure of the show, like in book one, Katara is still trying to figure out that she's a waterbender. She's kind of figuring out. And then she gets fucking to the Northern Water Tribe. And then, then finally, um, gets trained by master paku then i can say that she's becomes pretty decent come out never mind let me take back everything i oh. forgot avatar didn't really have that many episodes i'm still stuck in the one piece mindset oh where it's like rushing one piece is a little bit different because yeah, yeah. one arc from one piece will fuck around i happen. heard that show was it was <laughs> yeah. rushing an arc from one piece i get because yeah. that's like a hundred episodes i mean yeah yeah I forgot. Book one only has twenty episodes. See, Man. that's what I'm saying. Like, it doesn't make sense. You don't have to rush. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't make sense. Like, okay, you're making her a water master in one or two days. Like, I haven't watched it yet, but I've been hearing things, and I've been trying not to listen to shit so it doesn't affect my like when I watch it. But if you're making, if you, at least make her shit at water bending until until she starts getting trained by Master Paku. Cause, cause, remember when they finally they got the water bending scroll, and then she actually got trained by Master Paku. How yeah. quick she fucking picked it up, and she started fucking, yeah. she started banging motherfuckers up when she fucking learned from Master Paku after that. Yeah, see, and even doing the math, we'd say it's a twenty minute episode, twenty episodes, four hundred minutes. That's six point six repetent hours. Call it, just call it set. Add the extra minutes in. Call it eight hours. It's still two hours of Netflix BS that you got in there. Right. 
So then you can you can add in some of the sto- uh, you can add in some of the dumb stuff. Some that they used side to do. shit. You can give Sokka extra screen time for the stupid stuff he used to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I've like I've heard some things where like the show was great. One, I I say this though, is it great because or is it nostalgia? I still watch that shits now, and it's still fucking great. Oh oh no, I'm sorry, I wasn't talking about the anime. I was talking about the um. The live action, so never mind. Oh, oh. No, I'm talking about the show. Oh, okay. The show, the, oh, car- no, the, ad- the cartoon, the cartoon was, was amazing. Yeah. Because what the jokes that were told in the cartoon, yeah. when, especially when you hear Kasaka say the so dumbest shit for the first time, mm-hmm. you know, it, it just you know makes you laugh. And, and I heard that it doesn't translate well, well okay. to, to live action. I can because see that. I can see it, though, because like... You're trying. You're, it's almost like you're wearing a mask. You know, you're saying you're trying to imitate something. Yeah. Because like, we grew up on this show. It's amazing to us, and it. So that and then I made this point in the last my last episode was. Are we going into it with high expectations? You know, because of how great the show was, or and we're not giving this show it's the, the, it's opportunity because to at be least, its own thing. At least for the cartoon, we were like. What the hell is this? What the hell is this? And it just became like the greatest fucking thing ever. Yeah. You know, because no one ever thought of that type of concept of like yeah. you know, people fucking being able to bend elements of something. That's fucking sick. But like, you know, with us having, us growing up with a show, people still watching it. Like I have the Blu ray just so I can watch it anytime I want. But like, um, we at least got to like see what it progressed into. And now that we have this new thing where it's live action. Like, um, I don't, I feel like we built it up so high that we're like, all right, now we get to see our favorite characters in like an actual, like real life format. And we kind of put it like this fucking high Dude. pedestal. And I think that might be the problem too, where it's like, we are, cause when you look at Avatar, you got, we got, when we first saw it, we got to see that slow progression. So we got to really see this build up. And then that final battle with Ozai, it's like you really get to see, like, no, that was him. Like, the entire fight, honestly, if Aang wanted to end Ozai within, like, the first five minutes, he could have. Mm-hmm. He could have killed him instantly. Like, once he went to Avatar State, it was a wrap. Yeah. But it was a constant battle with himself of saying, like, yeah. I don't want to kill. Like, don't. it's not who I am. So that's what the whole... Even though all the other Avatars were, well, like, no, something you got to You got to kill him. Even... Um, Roku was Roku like, was like yeah. no, you got to kill him. Like, this is where I messed up. And this is why this became your problem is because I messed up and didn't kill, kill my it, friend. Kill my own friend. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you get that final ending. Then it's like he discovered. Then he like fully discovers energy bending. And you're like, oh, there's the, there's a great way to wrap this up. And it's mm-hmm. like you guys didn't compromise. Like you actually found a real ending. He like, really wrote- found. He found. A, he The dude wrote a way. Or didn't wrote. But like. Uh, Aang found a way what? to like keep his moral code yeah. in check. Like there, there was a full ending, and then you got to see some of the history. And then I saw with like I've seen some episodes of Legend of Korra where they like kind of start filling in the back history mm-hmm. of bending, and then they don't. I, from what I've seen, I didn't see everything. They kind of didn't contradict what they were saying before, so they kind of built on top of it. Where like the original benders were the turtles. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. And it's like everything kind of learned. They came from them. But it might or be or the just, animals. The yeah. animals were like the like the turtles were the original like I forget who were the original water but, like the, like the dragons were the original the fire firebenders yeah. and like and stuff like that. So I that's where I feel like I'm at. But I keep hearing things like the jokes or the commentary doesn't translate. Well, well. Here's the thing: how easy is it to make a five six year old laugh versus yeah. an adult? Yeah. The, I don't know though. I could still watch fucking fucking Sokka be buried in the ground talking about, you know. Yeah, so best way I kind of look at it is one that was our childhood, so kind of it kind of breaks back dude, different when emotions. Dude, when they're going through the fucking desert, dude, yeah, and and, he, and they're drinking cactus juice and he's tripping. Or or I remember the exact scene where he was stuck in the ground, fingers out, and the little yeah. the little thing comes and then the mother comes out of nowhere and Aang actually has the earth bed to save him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What? what was the little thing called? Um, oh, fluffy, uh, <laughs> fluffy cuddly poos or something like that. Something, something like yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Now I, I don't know. I all I know is that I'm gonna watch it. I, I think I might start. I think I might watch it uh, this weekend. Oh, okay. And 
see. Mm. Well, I, I, you know me. I won't bullshit. I yeah. won't. I'll try to give it. It it might just be that because it might be a thing of nostalgia where it's like we look back and then something just talking to my wife and everything and kind of notice like a good example that I'll say is like when I was a kid, I didn't think Bernie Mac was funny. Okay. Now that I'm an adult, I actually understand his jokes. True. He is fucking, he was fucking hilarious. So now when they say like, no, Bernie Mac is a king. Now I can say, no, he was really that. But it's like, as a kid, I was like, oh, he's not that, really that funny. But then at the same time, I could go back and say, well, if I was five, six looking at Dave Chappelle and the jokes that he makes now, it's like, I don't get it. Mm-hmm. He's not funny. So I think with Avatar, I was like, we watched it then. We're younger. It's like, you're catering to your audience. Like, oh, yeah. we're kids. Oh, this is funny. If the first time you saw it, oh, fluffy, fluffy, uh, cuddly poos, cuddly poos. Mm-hmm. As an adult, you'd be like, that's not funny. Man, that, that, come on, that, that, that's some stupid. That's something stupid that you say to your friends every day. It's yeah. like you kind of. I guess I can't like put myself in that mindset because like since we did grow up with that, did we. But then who's Netflix catering to at this point though? Are they catering to the nostalgia fan fan base or are they trying to bring in a new fan base? I don't know. That one I couldn't tell you. That that's the that's a whole business thing because it. I also me, heard I heard the boxing on it. I heard like the fights are fucking dope, but I just hear that it's just the commentary, like the talking, isn't like up to par. Like it's just weird. I, I think that would be a question for them who they were trying to cater to. Because I know if you were trying to cater to nostalgia, you would try to keep it as close to the cartoon as possible. I get it. Like there are going to be certain things. They're just like. No, 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 We can't do that. I even heard the writers, the, the original writers for the Avatar, they, they bailed off the project. See, that means that some, there was something, something I feel like happened. Netflix did their Netflix shit where it, they're like, hey, we're going to make, we like your idea, ideas. like we like your original idea, but we're kind of like, do the Netflix thing. We got to make and, it different. Yeah. We got to make it Netflix. And so they're like... like <laughs> what? Why, why did you call us? Yeah, like okay, like, like you guys could have just bought the rights and left us out of it. Like people do that all the time. Yeah, they give give somebody a shit ton of money. Say we're gonna write our own version of this. Here's your check. Shut the fuck up and leave us alone. We got this. But for that, then that's what I remember when they brought them in. It was like, oh, this might actually be real good because right. you brought the original writers right. in. It wasn't gonna be like as I long as I don't as long as I don't hear another fucking person say "ung" again. "Ung." Who the hell was saying "ung"? <laughs> It's Aang. <laughs> okay. So you clearly haven't seen the movie. The old movie. No, no, no. I did not see that old shitty ass movie. Oh, the firebenders need a pot of fire to bend. Oh. Dude, they were calling Aang Ong in that movie. Ong. You know, I could have beat the firebenders back then. It's called a fire extinguisher. <laughs> Actually, they no. It's called a dude. bucket of water over the... Pu- Firebend what now? Yeah. At least now they can just shoot it out of the That's hand. what did... Yeah, it's weird, dude. It's weird, um, but I hear that. Uh, yeah, yeah. If I don't hear "ung," they already got a plus in my book. If you hear "ung," do me a favor, tell me. I'll write the email for you. What the hell are you guys doing? Yeah, but I hear the I hear the fights, man, are good. I hear they're pretty decent. That's I mean that's what I hear. I'm not trying to hype it up. Did, did they do, did they do "ung" dirty like in the cartoon where they made him a woman, or is he a boy this time? What do you mean? Oh, do you remember the um? It was the cartoon and every in the cartoon it was like book. It was the book of fire, and they went to see the play. Oh, oh and they made yeah. Ang the girl, no, and he's, he was he's, like pissed the entire time. <laughs> he's nah, he's a boy. He's a boy. Oh, okay. but um, yeah, I I don't know. I I'm. Are you gonna watch it? Like, do you think about it? I I probably find some time, try it, and everything. Yeah. If I hear the Ong thing, yeah, you're definitely you're getting pr- turned you're off. You're probably not gonna hear that. And then it would just have to be, I'd have to see something weird. I, I don't like that it's rushed. It sounds like the mm-hmm. book one was, did it at least end in the uh, the water capital? I don't know. Okay. I did hear one thing, though. They skipped over the whole Avatar State scene. They did? Uh, now, this is, this is hearsay. I will say that. This is probably hearsay. But the whole thing where he actually turned into the, the water fish oh uh, yeah thing. yeah 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 i think they skipped over that or something oh no which was that's a fucking good scene that's like epic that's like a good finale so there would have to be a couple of things that uh was blue mask book one no i think it's book two okay yeah there's certain things that they can't skip no, over. no 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 the blue he started wearing it 
I think Zuko started wearing it in book one okay. because that's when um, Commander Zhao was like trying to kill Good. Zuko because he knows that he's the blue spirit, mm-hmm. you know? So though they're like key things that I'd probably, if I watch it, those would be the key, key things. The only thing that sucks about the whole uh, Avatar state scene is that's at the end of the, the damn thing. So at that point I can't say, oh, I'm going to cut it off. You'd already watch it off. It's a little late now. But it it will just be stuff like that. If you if he doesn't go back to the air temple, I'm, I'm gonna be annoyed because I'm about to say that was like his whole thing. Like, mm-hmm. no, we gotta go back to the air temple. I gotta see everybody. Yeah. I wish we had more time because I would love to watch the episode with you. I really would. <laughs> It'd be <laughs> fucking hilarious. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll how about this? I'll watch it. I'll have you watch your episode. And then we'll have to talk again about it. Okay. We'll have to, we'll have to come back on and talk about it if, if you watch it. All right. I think we got it there, man. All right. I made you the next minute John Wick question. Huh? Oh, ex- fuck it. We'll talk about that. Actually, hold on. You want to ask the John Wick question? So the John Wick question, guys, is um, it's a would you rather question. Steal, steal John Wick's puppy or Appa from Aang? I'm stealing Appa every day of the week. Really? When, when has Aang ever wanted to kill anybody? Even the... Even... Dude, they the the sand what? the sandbender stole Appa and he flipped his shit. Did he kill anybody? He almost did. Nah, did he? It kill took him? it took Katara. Listen, it took Katara to like bring his ass in an embrace for him to calm down. Okay. We're gonna start off with the whole series of John Wick. John Wick. <laughs> I won. know. I've seen John what? Wick. What happened? He killed John Wick's dog. Oh. You pit you you kill you pissed off the boogeyman killer because you killed his dog. He kills kills the son, kills the father, then kills the uncle. By killing the uncle, then involves some other people, kills them, then kills and it pisses off the family, gets extradited from the family, kills the entire family, gets pissed off because then some he quits the game. Somebody calls him back in because they now know that he's back in because somebody killed his fucking dog. Gets pissed off. He's so goddamn pissed off. Shoots the man <laughs> in the fucking place. The owner and everybody else is so fucking scared of him slash respects him that they say, fuck it, that whole building gets burnt the fuck down. Mm -hmm. John Wick 4 then goes off where he basically kills the ultimate. Spoiler. He kills the ultimate. Spoiler my ass. The movie's been out. I haven't watched it. He kills. I I won't go too deep into it. He kills the powers at B. He goes to war with them. The whole thing when they've been talking about the, um, I forget the name. The the high table. The high table. I don't want to hear about it no more. Stop. All right. But it, it's a war with the high table. Okay. Let's always remember, this started over a fucking dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That but has been it, the running joke. But You want to piss off this man because you killed his dog. All right. Degree to disagree. I feel like Aang, he, even though he's a monk, he can push to some limits, man. What's he going to energy bend me? I don't have any energy to bend. He was going to murk some people, dude. Wow. He went to the Avatar state. Dude, he could he could suck the air out of your lungs and kill you. You know the sad part. I watched the video with him. Like, it, it's a good thing they made the air people, the the monks and the nomads, because that's really all they had to do was just suck the air out your lungs. Yeah, you're dead. You're dead. Done. They could have been the like if they had the attitudes of the Fire Nation, it'd have been the most dangerous nation. I think so too. I really do. They actually, that's another that's another conversation that says like, what nation is the weakest nation? And a lot of people were like, the Air Nation. I'm like, what makes you think the Air Nation is the weak? Just because they were monks doesn't mean they were weak. There was a reason why, well, because the, the Avatar was going to be an airbender. But, yeah. I mean, he, um, what, what was it? Uh, Fire Lord, uh, not Ozai, but uh, what's Fire Lord? Uh, oh. Ozon, right? No, I no. think it was the whole, um, fuck. And we say we're airbender fans. Sozin. Sozin. Fuck. Yeah, Sozin's common. God damn it. There's a comment named after him. Fire Lord Sozin goes after... The, he, I feel like if during the comment, he could have gone after any of mm-hmm. the nations and kind of marked them off. Yep. Because of how strong they were. But, um, yeah, airbenders get so much fucking hate, man. But they got... They can fly. They can fucking suck the air out of you. They can do some crazy shit. I, I think people forget about this thing called a tornado. Right. Uh, what tornadoes have done to anything that's been in their way yeah real quick what 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 nation what nation do you think is the weakest 
<laughs> it's hard, right? Water. Really? It's not fire. No. It's fire's not, military is too strong. It's not fire. But what makes you think water, though? Water benders can fuck things shut up. Because though. at the end of the day, that's the only one that you just can't make appear out of nowhere. Because even with earth benders. You can. Be- no, no, no. All right. Look, look skip over. No, no, skip, no, 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 no. Skip over the Qatar shit where Katara was doing the bending her sweat. We're not talking about what about what about when she uh, started learning blood bending and was taking water out of the grass and all that other shit. Th- it's water, dude. You can do that. I got water. Cause... Someone made a funny joke and said, "What if you spit and made a fucking bullet?" <laughs> I said, "That's the funniest shit I've ever heard in my life." It's it's not fire. It's it's damn sure not air, considering that. They all chose the life of peace, and people still left them the hell A alone. part of me th- wants to say, I might get a lot of hate for this. A part of me says Earth. Only being because Earth was on the forefront of a lot of this war, and they were getting murked. Yeah, but then I think about what I saw, what but Avatar ta- Kyoshi did. Yeah. She was just a little different. But <laughs> she was di- she's an Avatar. <laughs> she's different. I mean, I understand then you got Toph and stuff like that, yeah. but like Toph was different, too. She was fucking Just shit say, up. Please remember that. Like, there was the whole bloodbending thing, but like. And Boomy. Boomy was pretty tough. He was Boomy White Lotus, was, dude. Boomy was ridiculous. And he was ridiculous in a fashion that they were like, well, he's locked up. And he's like, yeah, I'm only here because I left them. Yeah. Like, he didn't know what metal bending was. I don't was. know. Like, I think that's like, the, I think it's a funny, it's a funny question because the Avatar, the whole show is based off of the balance and stuff like that. And they're all balanced pretty fucking well. Like, they all got their feats. They all got, like, their strengths and weaknesses. I really can't choose one on who would be the weakest. I understand why you want to say Water Nation, but I don't know, dude. It it could be Herb. It it depends on who we're talking about here. I'm sorry, because as good as airbending that Aang was, I'm afraid to see what some of those monks could actually do. If they were like pushed to the point, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying, like, like if they were like on fire nation level, like, you know what yeah. I'm saying, like, fuck. Because I'm about to say the only reason they won was because of Sozin. Like the only reason the fire nation wiped them out so was because of Sozin's comment. And you saw with Ozai, like that didn't just make him stronger. Like this man was burning an entire strip of land. Yeah, like he was like cooking it. And he, then you just had, had just average firebenders, so average fucking... soldiers just shooting out. Like fucking super flamethrowers, yeah. like they were like the dragons themselves. Like, yeah. Oh, this isn't like a times two booster. This is a times one thousand booster. Yeah. Like you even saw. Um. I mean, Uncle Iro, you looked oh, at him. He, he was like, "What the? Fuck? He was like shooting a by gigantic He's, fucking fireball and breaking down Bossing Saint's walls. You had him and the other Fire Lord Master. Ooh, the other Fire Lord Master just fucking fireball, wall fireball, fireball, just shooting it yeah. down. Like, okay, wall of fire there. Uh, come back. Down there, uh, all right. I'm done with you. All right, you go there. Even the waterbenders in the full moon, they I'm, had some big feats I too. About that. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's I think it's all tied, dude. I don't think that really is. Earth. I don't know though because, because does Earth have an event that just makes them no? Nah. But they can. But they boosted their skills up because Toph showed like they could like do a lot of cool shit. I could do the battle painting, but but then they all kind of do that though. Like uh... Is bending that impressive compared to what? Because if you compare it to the things that all the other ones can do, yeah. Because you're talking about all right. Well, I'm gonna give energy bending to Airbenders. Okay. Because that was the whole thing of mental balance and everything. And that's what you had to be to be an airbender. Like, you had to have mental balance. That's why I could, in The Legend of Korra, she wasn't really good at it because she didn't really. She was a horrible air, uh, airbender. Mm-hmm. It wasn't her strongest suit because she. they said she picked up earthbending real quick, firebending. But once it came to air, it was hard for her because it was all about balance, mm-hmm. keeping your mind clear and everything. Fire has lightning. It's And they have lava. Oh, yeah. Wait, but the, but the lightning one is fucking tough, it's dude. Fucking lightning, yeah, really? it's fucking tough. And then and then water has blood. Water bending. has blood bent, dude. Blood bending would fuck, dude. If there was the no only rules, person that could def- defy blood bending was Aang. Yeah, only the Avatar could defy blood bending. 
Yeah. And he had to go into an avatar state that like, okay, I'm done with you with the, um, I remember seeing in the legend core where they did a flashback and the guy blood bending him. He's like, all right, avatar state. I'm done with you. We're not doing the shit anymore. Yeah. Yeah, you're right though. I don't know. Metal, say, metal bending's cool though, but I don't know if it's that cool. To shoot it, it, lightning? It's not cool enough to be bloodbending that got banned the way they said yeah. you bloodbend, you no. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Lightning, it it it's fucking lightning. And yeah. Energy bending is disrespectful on all levels because it's okay. You just can't bend no more. So somebody yeah. could be a you took a master bender's ability to bend. That was the yeah, I don't know. We're not gonna sell that debate. We're, I, I don't think. I honestly, me personally, I think that it's a balance. I, I can't. I can't. I. It might be Earth. What, I don't know. What event gives Earth the power? The ultimate power. <laughs> None. <laughs> but what event gives uh, Airbenders the ultimate power? I can suck the air out your lungs. I don't need an event. <laughs> True. I mean, you could crush someone with the boulder. But let's say you're talking- you could, dude. Earthbenders were sinking people into the ground. Oh, all right. Here's a better one. I control all the air around you. So at that point, all the air that's around you, I just make it crush you. Yeah. So an airbender now becomes a fucking earthbender with air. Yeah. <laughs> True. Maybe it is Earth. That, that show, could, that show could get real dark if they wanted to Guys, make it too. Guys, you decide. I don't know. I can't really decide. But we're going to end it here. We're going to end it here. Guys, go check out my shorts on YouTube. Check out Instagram. Check out TikTok put up all of the little short snippets of the podcast on there go check out spotify uh if you want to listen to the podcast and you're driving to work you can absolutely go to spotify apple podcast google podcast if you want to watch the video version you can go to youtube absolutely um just show me some love hit the like button comment i love comments because i love hearing discussions and i will respond um let me know what you want us to talk about next um subscribe subscribing helps and overall just showing some love um tyler thanks for coming on again Mm -hmm. and as always guys stay nerdy